Hello, everyone, and welcome to my Word of the Week. I will be taking my message from the JSM Word for every day. I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them who perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. How is the cross the power of God? That is the great question of this text. First of all, the statement in this Bible text tells us that outside the preaching of the cross, there is no power of God. Sin is a frightful business. Its bondage is so severe that man with his ability, even religious man, holds no answer. In other words, there is no remedy for sin as it regards the intellectualism of man, the ability of man, or anything that man has. Sin is so powerful, so destructive, and so perverted that God had to become man and had to go to the cross in order that this most horrifying malady could be properly addressed. Otherwise, the human race was doomed. Therefore, at the very beginning, we have to learn just how bad the problem actually is. That within itself is a problem. Mankind doesn't admit how bad sin is, and the church by its action shows that it little understands the potency of sin. If it did, it would hardly try to adopt the bankrupt ways of the world in order to address this malady of darkness. As it regards power, which is an absolute must if people are to be delivered, we must come to the conclusion that there is no power in a wooden cross. Likewise, there was really not any power in the death of Christ. Paul said that Jesus was crucified through weakness, 2 Corinthians 13 and 4. However, it must be understood that this weakness was contrived. In other words, he purposely did not use his power to extricate himself from the cross. Had he done so, man could not have been redeemed. Furthermore, there certainly is no power in death itself, as would be overly obvious. So how does the preaching of the cross bring about the power of God? It is not so much what happened at the cross, which brings about power, but rather what the death of Christ on the cross made possible. When Jesus died, he atoned for all sin, past, present, and future, at least for all who will believe, John 3 and 16. Satan's power over humanity is sin. With all sin atoned, however, Satan loses his legal right to hold man in bondage. And yet Satan continues to hold untold millions in bondage. So how do we reconcile this? Those who are unconverted have not availed themselves of what Jesus did at the cross. So Satan has a legal right to keep them in bondage. Millions of Christians also fall into the same category. They also have not availed themselves of what Jesus did at the cross. So in some way, Satan also holds these also in bondage. Let me say that again. So in some way, Satan also holds these also in bondage. That's why Paul said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Paul here is speaking to believers. When Jesus atoned for all sin, this means that the sin debt was paid, at least for those who will believe, which then gives the Holy Spirit the latitude to work powerfully within our lives. The power is in the Holy Spirit who manifests such on our behalf, at least if our faith is correctly placed in Christ and the cross. The cross is what afforded this. Whenever we preach the cross 
And when individuals believe what we preach, the Holy Spirit can then exercise his almighty power on their behalf, for he is God. Then sin in all its forms can be overcome. Then every bondage can be broken. That's what the preaching of the cross will do. And that concludes my word of the week. And remember that God loves you. Like I have already said, everything the believer needs in their walk with God has been paid for in full by Jesus Christ our Lord. When Jesus said it was finished, he meant what he said. Colossians 2, 14 and 15 says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So whatever it is you're struggling with, Jesus has paid for your victory over that thing. And for you to walk in victory. I know I'm repeating myself from last week, but I feel this must be said. There is victory. And victory has a name, and it's Jesus. So place your faith exclusively in Christ and his finished work and do not allow it to be moved and set yourself apart unto God on a daily basis and yield to the power of the Holy Spirit and let him do the work in you that only he can do and he can do anything because he is God. God bless. <laughs>